Hello YouTube, this is Snail Wolf. Well, today I'm going to talk about converting your analog camera into a digital camera. Just look around on the internet, you'll see many websites that uh, give you an overview of how to do it. And I also did it in the most simple way possible. So I converted this one to a digital camera. If you haven't seen it, yeah, just click the link in the description below. Uh, but be advised, spoiler alert, I cut up the camera and I fit in an action cam. Okay, but you don't need to go that way. There are multiple other ways of doing this without hurting the camera. Okay, so if you want to know uh, the different options on how to do it and uh, you want to know some of the problems, you will bump into, then yeah, just stick around. I will go over the options and the problems. Uh, yeah. So first off, you got to make a choice. Are you really going to break an old camera? A pretty nice old camera. I mean, I did that, but the camera that I used for my project was completely broken. The bell bellows were shot, the lens was not good anymore, the shutter didn't work, it was sand all over and a bit of rust. So in my case, I did it. But I love old cameras, so I will never do it to functional, nice old ladies like this one. And then secondly, are you going to use the original lens or not? Because that's also an option. Now say you're using the original lens, yeah? that is possible with these old cameras, but it's very, very, very difficult. I mean, this guy did it, but actually, if you look at his channel and if you look how he did it, he didn't really do it at all. So most of these guys have the same issue. Not all what the lens sees is visible in the picture. So if you make it digital, F, just let's say you uh, put here a, a digital part or, or a sensor or whatever, most of them have the issue that the sensor they're using, they mostly use cheap old cameras or digital cameras, is, I don't know if you can see it, but this lens is tiny, it's just a dot. If you take off the glass, you'll see it's just a dot. So if you have this small little dot, and you put it here on the lens, uh, on the image plane. This is the image plane of the analog camera. So actually, your sensor, image sensor, needs to be as big as this to have the same image that comes into the camera. If you don't do that, then everything will look zoomed in. So this tiny little bit will catch just a, a fraction, a portion, of this image plane. So that's a bit worthless. Then you have an analog camera that's converted to a digital one, but you can't use it because everything looks zoomed in. You, you don't have real pictures. You need to stitch them together. That, that's really worthless. Now, so you can say, yeah, just put in a very big yeah, uh, image sensor for from a, a good digital camera. Okay, bigger than this preferably, but let's say this one is quite big can fit it in yeah if you take off everything of course but just say you put a sensor in and it is here at the correct distance to the image plane yeah they will have a nice picture that's true but are you really going to hack up and break a pretty new digital camera i don't think so that's really expensive so let's say you buy a second hand one Okay, they're still expensive. And then yeah, I have a lot of trouble, which I explain next. Because uh, it's not as easy as it seems, not just taking out the sensor and fitting in it into a new one. No. You will be needing the sensor. Right down. I'll show you. You will be needing a sensor. Yep. You put it in. Okay. Then you will be needing a computer, like for instance this one, Raspberry Pi Zero. Okay, you fit in that one. That's not all, you still need a battery. Also fit it in. Congrats, it all fits. 
you are ready to take a digital photograph with your analog camera. Okay, that's too simple. Also need to study some programming or maybe you know programming because if you all fit these things together, you still need to program your computer to accept this sensor and also to accept this battery and you also need some other parts. So actually you're building your own digital camera. Is it really worthwhile? Some people go about that. Uh, some people do that, but still it's, it's almost impossible. Except if you're an engineer or a super programmer. So even if you put everything in, eh, everything works, then still you need to make sure that the shutter button also works. So you need to build in an actuator so you can use the shutter button that also needs to work with the computer. So really, good luck programming all this into a working camera. If you know nothing about soldering or programming, then you're done for. So then another thing you can do, plan C. You can hack a working second-hand camera and just insert it in its entirety into the camera. But modify the back, close the back, switch on the camera, voila, you have a full working digital camera. Many people do it this way because it just works. Most of the time you can't use the lens. And even if you can use the lens, you have the same problem as, as I just mentioned, that the sensor, the image sensor is probably too small. So even if it works, hey, you put in the camera and everything, then the lens will just function as a piece of glass. Because actually the nice thing about these old lenses is that most of the time you can adjust the shutter speed, you can adjust to bulb mode, but all those things will be worthless when you put in a digital camera because digital ca camera has got its own settings. You can't just use bulb mode, you can't use the, the shutter speeds. It, it, it doesn't work. I mean, they already have their own shutter speed set. You can set it. So, problem is actually just a digital camera with a pretty shell around it. That's what you will be doing. And you still have to hack up your camera. I mean, the whole idea of turning them into a digital one will revolve around only one thing. That is, you have a pretty looking digital camera because you won't be using almost nothing of your uh, analog camera. So you have a digital camera that looks like an analog camera. But I tell you now, if you don't like tinkering or you're not that handy, don't do it. Just buy a digital camera that looks analog. There are so many um, ways to do that. F Fuji has got a lot of cameras. The, I think the XV100 and the XE3 or something. I don't know exactly. I will show you some pictures here. They look very old fashioned and very nice. So why bother? Why bother? converting your old analog camera into a digital one. It's so much work and even the end result won't be 100% what you want because the, like I said, the digital ones, the digital cameras that look retro, they're much better and you have everything in one package. Now, why did I bother uh, building my uh, digital uh, camera or <laughs> analog camera into a digital camera? I think it's a lot of fun, really. I mean, it only cost me uh, $12 uh, and I had an action cam lying around and put all these things together and it works beautifully well and I'm having a lot of fun with it. And the end result is quite good. It's a working camera with uh, good functionalities and it's very reliable. So it's exactly what I needed for only 12 bucks. I mean, come on guys. So we can talk all day about this. Eh? why you want to change an analog camera into a digital one. And there are a few options I showed you. You can also use a little children's camera. Just open it up. Oh, sorry. Just open it up here. Put the back. 
take off the front part here, the lens is still there, just put it in. You won't be able to really close it, but everything will work. You will have a working lens, working computer, a uh, little screen, everything. It is, this is the easiest way, it only costs $9. And actually, actually, that is something I will do in the next video without hacking up or hacking up too much an old camera. Yeah, that was it. If you like my video, please like and subscribe. Then I can many, make many more of them. Okay, bye-bye.